everybody, this is a very different format from your regular expected what's in your bag sort of videos. Today it's what's in his golf bag. Just because filming is a little tricky and because Michael's the one that has the mic on and he's going to be moving around, I just i am going to set this up and I'm going to step off off screen. I may ask him some questions to help move things along and Michael will probably have to repeat my questions so yeah, that y'all can hear me. Sure, I know. So, same concept, Michael has a golf bag. We are going to insert a picture of it here because it is too big to fit in the shot. Yeah. And now take it away, Mr. Goldberg. Show us what's in your bag. Well, I guess we can start. Tell us a little bit about the bag. Uh, the bag is a bag that you got for my birthday, I guess, several years ago. We were members of a club here in town. And it's uh, actually got, you'll be able to see it in a different picture, the TPC of San Antonio Golf Club. Um, what where, it's uh, made by Titleist, so the same brand that makes the golf balls that I play are also the brand that makes the bag. First thing that I have in the golf bag is not a, a club at all. It's a uh, kind of a pre-swing, pre-game swing trainer. It's called the Orange Whip. Uh, see, it has this orange ball at the very top, and it's, it's weighted very heavy. So it's actually really good as you get older. So somebody like me who's getting up in years, mid-40s or older, I'm not as flexible, I'm not as uh, capable of just kind of rolling out of the car and playing around a golf. So this helps to, it's heavy and I can take 10 to 15 swings with it. You're not hitting a ball and it just kind of loosens me up. And then I've got my, uh, the woods that I use. I've got a driver. Uh, it's kind of a funny uh, head cover. It says grenade on it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not the, although there is a driver that I had one time bought with this head cover, it's not what I used. I actually use an old driver that I've had for many, many years. I've tried a lot of new drivers, but this is uh, by a company out of Japan called Yonex, Y-O-N-E-X. This is kind of my old faithful. I've hit this for 10 years, and even at my age, I'm still able to drive the ball consistently. In fact, 300 yards. Plus. Plus, sometimes plus, but I'm, I'm pretty close to 300 yards with that driver. Okay, next one, so you, the driver is the longest club, obviously. The next one is a um, kind of a, uh, it's a fairway metal is what they call it. So it's a smaller headed club. It's a tailor-made R7. And um, it only has, for the golfers out there, it only has 13 degrees of loft. So this actually rivals my driver. It's a little bit easier to control because it's a little bit shorter length club. And so the shorter the length, the easier it is to control. And where is that sock cover from? Oh, the sock cover is from Pebble Beach, Northern California, the Pebble Beach. You've not played the course. Haven't played it yet, but we visited it, and I actually have future aspirations to get out there shortly. Okay, so those are kind of my clubs that I hit off the tee when I'm trying to hit the ball really long. And then the next club is a my final wood. This is a uh, great sock cover, a head cover on here. It's from St. Andrews, the old course. We got that when we were in Scotland, obviously. And uh, underneath it is another Yonex club. It's an older club, but I've had it for a while and I hit it beautifully. It's called a five wood. It's 18 degrees aloft, which is a lot of loft. Um, and you can hit this off the ground without teeing it up. So for instance, if you're on a long par five golf uh, hole, you might use that to try to reach it in two, reach the green in two. All right, so th those are my woods. And now I go to my iron. Sometimes I carry a three iron and um, I can't have a three iron and a five wood in my bag at the same time because you're only allowed to have 14 clubs maximum. So I'll interchange depending upon the type of course I'm playing. This is a three iron. It's made by Titleist. And um, do you have any questions about that, Marn? Or no? Okay. So I'll hit this maybe about 220 yards. Um, and, then I, and then I go to my, my typical irons. My whole bag is made by a, um, my irons are all made by a Japanese company called Yururi. That's uh, that. spelled phonetically. It's Y-U-R-U-R-I. It's out of Japan. I got these clubs custom fitted. Um, so they have a really nice high end shaft, which in golf is really important depending upon your swing speed. Oh, I have a question. Sure. What kind of shaft do you like? So I clean, play, ladies. yeah, it's kind of funny, but um, I like the, a really heavy and actually a very stiff type of shaft, as funny as that may sound. In golf, it's important for people, for guys out there who may have been competitive baseball players or hockey players, 
when they play golf, they already have kind of innately a very, very fast swing because they've been playing that type of sport for so long. And uh, so I actually swing very fast and very aggressively, almost at the level of like a tour player in terms of how fast I swing, although I'm not a tour player, but that's just kind of my action through the ball because of my former, um, you know, playing as a, as a ball player. And so I play a tour, a, a true temper dynamic gold S 400. It's, it's a tour issue shaft. Uh, and I have the, these clubs in a four iron, five iron, six iron, seven, eight, nine pitching wedge. And then I have three wedges on top of the pitching wedge. Um, wedges are used for close in distances, you know, within 125 yards. My 53 degree gap wedge is in there, uh, has a special kind of a, uh, shaft for wedges, believe it or not. Game gets very technical. And uh, I, I play KBS Tour Custom wedge shafts. They're called High Rev 2.0. So if the guys out there want to Google it, you can figure out what that means. It basically means that with these shafts, when you hit the ball at a high enough swing speed, which is what I'm able to do for me, I can impart a lot more spin on the ball. So when you're close to the green, you want to be able to hit the ball on the green and typically you want it to stop pretty quickly or you, at least you want to have the ability to do that. And these shafts give me the ability to do that along with the club face. So um, I've got it in a gap wedge, which I carry distance wise about 115 yards in the air. And then it goes down to a 56 degree sand wedge, um, which I send about 105, 107 yards in the air. And then I've got the shortest club is a 61 degree lob wedge. 61 degrees is a lot of uh, loft and it sends the ball way up high in the air, especially if I swing fast uh, or I can do other things, but basically I can only hit it about 90 yards. Oh, that's it. Yeah, but that's good. So as you get closer to the green, you want to be able to move to a club that sends the ball a little bit shorter in distance, but have more control and then putter. Man, putter, I have a love-hate relationship with putters as a lot of good golfers and guys who are women also who are, you know, kind of golf addicts. Right now I'm playing what's called a Seymour putter, same kind of putter that's used by Zach Johnson on the PGA Tour. This, this, oh, the club head cover? Yeah, so I was fortunate to play a country club just north of Philadelphia called Marion Country Club. It's a very exclusive club, and they played the 2013 U.S. Open there. Uh, I actually got to play Marion East you know, I think it was my favorite golf course that I've ever played. There are a lot of compartments, so kind of like a handbag that the ladies would have. The men have golf bags, and they got all kinds of cool little compartments in it. Okay, well, first I've got this really great towel. It's made by Oakley, or OGO rather, O-G-I-O. -O. Um, it's a really cool material. I never really thought about it much, but I think you'd probably get a kick out of it. I don't even know how to describe it, but it's, microfiber? it's a microfiber and it's really great for cleaning clubs and just keeping things dry during the course of a round of golf. Oh, the other thing I have is, this seems kind of funny, but I took one of the kids football Gatorade bottles. Remember when I was coaching football, we had all those Gatorade bottles, uh, containers. I, I keep one here because about four or five years ago for the very first time in my life, I kind of got a little bit dehydrated on a golf course and suffered from a kidney stone. And I'm like, yeah. I'm never doing that again. So I, uh, I definitely try to keep hydrated and I always keep this thing filled with water. So I'm chugging water throughout the entirety of my round. Okay. We have a few compartments in a golf bag and most golf bags are pretty similar looking in design. And so, um, this is what I put in my golf bag. So in this particular compartment right here, I just have things that deal with kind of the tactical nature of the club, the grip on the club. Um, this is a, uh, an item called Gorilla Gold. It's a grip enhancer. It's just a kind of a sticky, tacky towel that you can put up against the grip and it keeps it, you know, very tacky. Um, the other thing I guess that I have in here, which is important because when I play golf, I walk a lot. Uh, I'm not really big into riding. Sometimes I'll do it with friends, but when I'm really playing kind of a more serious round that I want to do well in, I keep snacks in here. So I, I basically have, uh, little bags of almonds, you know, almonds and water. That's not a bad combination, I guess, for somebody. Uh, this is a gold bond, just a little powder. So sometimes if you're playing in the summertime in South Texas, oh, you want me to stay down here? Yes. I can do that. I'm a former catcher. I can squat for a long time. <laughs> uh, gold bond right here. This is just a little baby powder kind of thing. And you know, sometimes your hands will get sweaty during the summers when it's humid. A bit. Yep. So that's what I've got out here. I got my almonds, I got my water. I keep my grips tacky or I keep my hands dry. That's kind of everything right here. Um, 
this part of my bag right here just has the golf balls I use. And so you may be able to zoom in on that. If you can't, you can kind of get a sense of it. If I, you, you should guess what kind of golf ball I play. It's a Titleist, obviously. And it's got, and it's got red numbers. So that, that, that indicates it's going to be a Pro V1X. Very important for me personally. Um, I play a Pro V1X. There's a difference Sorry, between the Pro V1 and the Pro V1X, but I play the Pro V1X. So I've got, you know, probably 12 or 11, 12, maybe 13 of those balls right there. Yep. Yep. They, they work the best in particular in the wind. Oh, you know, it's funny. They have a little thing right here, just a little compartment. And this is where I keep my Sharpie right here and a black Sharpie. Sometimes you'll mark your ball. If you're playing with somebody who has a similar type of ball, you want to mark it so you can identify your ball. If you hit it in a similar, uh, particular location, or if you're looking for your ball and you find it kind of just off the fairway or in the woods, you want to be able to identify your ball. And that's what I do. I also use it to mark my scorecard sometimes. Uh, there's a, there's a, that's exactly right. Uh, this compartment up here, just above the balls, I have two types of tees. That's all I've got. Yeah. I got two types of tees. Cause remember earlier, I guess I'll stay squatted. Huh? No, that's cool. I can do it. Um, Long tees. I play extra long tees. I think it's because of the baseball player in me. I'm used to hitting things off of a tee, like tee ball. That's a good way to practice baseball. So I like to tee the ball up higher than normal. I have four inch golf tees for my driver. I tee it up pretty high. And where do you find those? Uh, Golfsmith is where I pick them up. You can get them online actually in bulk and probably get a deal. I haven't done that, but I, I think you can. <laughs> yeah, they're not very expensive, but you know, these last a while. So these are long tees. I use these for my driver. Sometimes when you're on a par three or if you're hitting something other than your driver off the tee, depending upon the type of course or hole that you're playing, um, I use shorter tees, much shorter. These are just like two and an eighth inch tees. So far too short in size to use with a driver. The driver head's too big, but like with a fairway metal or if I'm hitting my three iron or even a shorter iron into a par three, this is a nice little tee to use for me. That size works for me. So now we flip the bag around. You can see the TPC of San Antonio logo. We're very proud of that. But we are actually members of the golf club at the club at Santerra in San Antonio. In this particular compartment, this is an interesting compartment because, you know, if you're putting your wallet or your key somewhere, you want them to be in maybe a little bit nicer compartment. So this is actually lined. I don't think it's lined with velvet, but it kind of feels velvety to me. I keep my golf gloves in here. I'll use a golf club sometimes, but not always. I've got a Titleist golf club, really nice, beautiful, soft leather. Uh, this is a Tour Exotics, Tour Edge golf club, but uh, I like the Titleist. It's really soft. Like Marnie, if I were to have you touch this, you'd be like, ah, oh, this is beautiful leather. Like really soft, really nice, yeah. I don't use a golf glove all the time, but... Um, Oh yeah. No, it's just the way that I grip the club. This uh, particular uh, ring finger, my right ring finger does kind of rub a little bit against my left index finger. And so, you know, it kind of chafes a little bit. I like to keep it. Electrical no, this is just a uh, bandaid. In fact, that's a nice segue into the next section here, which is the final uh, compartment, which is a long kind of vertical uh, pocket right here. I've got a couple of baggies. The first is, with first aid tape. So band-aids and tape, just for that reason alone, for me, I get a little rub right there. In fact, a lot of players on the tour I've noticed on TV have a similar type of wear, which to me is a good sign. It means I'm holding the club correctly. That's a good wear mark to get right on that ring finger. So that's what I have a baggie in there. I also have another baggie that has just kind of like little knickknacks. I've got a couple of poker chips, ones from the Bellagio Hotel. Sometimes we'll use poker chips as a ball marker. And then I've got other kind of traditional ball markers. I've got a divot repair tool. So when the ball hits the green, you want to be able to repair your divots. And then I've got a couple of little club cleaning brushes. brushes. It's very important as you hit your shorter irons. Remember earlier I was talking about wedges, pitching wedges. You want to have a lot of spin when you put the ball in play using those clubs. And so you got to keep the grooves real clean and these, these little uh, tools help you do it. And then I'm just pulling a couple of additional things that I happen to have. Whoa, in here. These are just a couple of swing tool, swing aids, swing training aids that I use. Um, it's hard for me to explain. I don't use a lot of tools, but these are two of my favorite. So, you know, when I'm practicing in the backyard or at the range, I'll use these tools. This particular tool is called the Greg Norman Secret. I don't think they even make it anymore. 
And what it does is it helps to keep your back wrist bent through the shot. So that's probably too much information, but I use it. Uh, this little tool here is made by Hank Haney, who's a famous golf instructor. Yeah, you put it on the uh, end, of a sh end, end of a wedge or a short club shaft, make it longer, and it helps to ensure that you don't flip your, your hands through the golf swing, which is important when you're swinging. And then the last thing I have is just a cover that goes on top of the clubs if it's ever raining or if I'm traveling. I may put that cover on uh, just to kind of further protect the, the clubs that I've got in here. So I think in a nutshell, that took you through my entire bag. I've got nothing else to tell you. I don't know about y'all, but I definitely learned a lot more about golf than I thought I would. This was really helpful for me. <laughs> this was nothing. I said nothing about golf, but yeah. It, for those of us who know nothing about golf, okay. that was a lot okay. of information. So thank you yeah. for sharing you your most favorite and prized possession or possessions yeah, it's, with all of us. It's been a labor of love for me. And there's and been a lot of time and effort and maybe a little bit of money put into it over the years. Just a little bit. We're not going to talk about it. <laughs> not a lot of I money. I never want to hear you complain about how much I spend on makeup. Anyway, if <laughs> any of you want to hear more expensive. about anything golf related or want Michael to expand more or sh I don't know, we're eventually going to have to have him make his own channel. But if you want to hear <laughs> yeah, anything right. more about golf, please let me know. And maybe I'll just do a bonus video on a day I don't normally upload and okay. put that up there for all you golf enthusiasts. Yeah, maybe I'll do a short game uh, tutorial in the backyard, there show you, you how go. to chip and putt. All right, we'll leave that for next time. As always, okay. thank you so much for watching. Thanks for your support of both of us. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll get Michael to answer them. Thanks so much. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Michael put some links in there to some items that he thought were important that every guy should have in their wardrobe. And I thought it would be a great idea if he expanded on those things and talked a little bit about how he chooses his wardrobe and how he puts stuff together.